Hello everyone and welcome back to the Green Developer channel, the channel where I share my whole development journey developing my first ever indie app through vlogs that I post on this channel every week. If you'd like to check those out, there's a whole playlist that I'm gonna link down in the description below that shares everything I've been working on so far. And before I get to today's topic, I want to remind you if you like this video, make sure to hit the like button down below, it helps me more than you can imagine. And if you want to see more of these types of videos, hit the subscribe button so you're notified next time I upload one. I've realized over the past few weeks that a lot of people that watch these videos aren't exactly the demographic I was expecting. I thought most of the people that would be watching would be people that have experience or maybe do iOS development professionally and are curious about what it looks like to develop an app as an indie developer. Or maybe even indie developers themselves that just want to have a different perspective on how other developers are working. But over the last few videos with the comments I've been getting and the comments I've been getting through my live streams when people come and talk to me, I've realized that a lot of you are also people that are maybe starting to get into iOS development or are even just thinking about getting started with it. And that video is gonna be for you. Today, I wanna go over what I've gone through personally to learn iOS development and hopefully in that way give you a couple ideas and maybe a couple tips on what you can be doing too. I'm gonna to preface this by saying I do have a Bachelor of Software Engineering, but I don't think it is required at all to learn to be a professional software developer or iOS developer for that matter. I just prefer to be transparent about it so you have a better understanding of where I come from with some of the things I might be talking about today. So before getting into this, um, before even getting into iOS development, if you have no programming experience at all, but you know that your end goal is to learn iOS development so you can develop apps for yourself, I have one first tip for all of you. And it might sound counterintuitive, but my tip is to go to something like Code Academy or another website that kind of holds your hand to learn programming and actually start learning a different language first. Now, I'm not saying go learn a whole stack or learn to go make games or web development and uh, do a full website. I'm just saying go learn the very basics of a different programming language like JavaScript or Python or whatever. Just enough to kind of get familiar with what functions are and variables and data types and stuff like that. Like I said, the idea is not to become an expert at those other languages. Um, just to get a basic idea of what another language looks like before jumping into Swift and, you know, learning that language. The idea behind it is that people kind of have a tendency to label themselves and stick to something directly, and that holds even more true to new programmers, and in doing so, new programmers sometimes get kind of scared of other languages because they think they're extremely different when in reality they're not and they have a very common core that is different but similar enough that you can you know relearn it quickly and not be so scared of those other languages the reality is as a professional or even as an indie developer it might come up that you need to you know do something in a different language for whatever reason maybe you need to run a script on a back end in python for some reason or your backend team is working in C-sharp and you need to understand something because someone's in vacation. And the quicker you get out of your mind that you only know iOS development in Swift, the better it's going to be for those situations. So might as well get a jump start while you're a beginner and, you know, get that out of the way right away and see that things aren't so different after all. And once you have that little base, you can move on to Swift knowing that it's not going to be an issue for the future when you have to come back to the other one. But that's just my two cents. You can do whatever you want with that and jump right into Swift. It doesn't matter if you learn that other language further down the road when you need it, but you know, having that small grasp of the fact that they're not so different after all and you shouldn't be scared of them is a good thing to learn right away as a developer. So let's get into the actual subject. I wanna to touch on three things that I've personally used when I was learning Swift and iOS development. First one is probably the one that, if I had to guess, if you Google you know, learning iOS development course is probably the one that's going to come up first. It's probably the one that has the most downloads and the more, you know, widely used by people. And that's Angela Yu's Udemy iOS development course. 
there's a reason why it's so popular and so downloaded and so highly rated and that's because it's a very thorough guide on basically everything that you need to know for basic iOS development. It's done extremely professionally and it covers everything you're gonna need to even become a professional developer if you practice those skills on personal projects after. Like I said, it's a huge bank of content. It's something like 60 hours worth of videos included in that course. And it goes through all the content in a way that's very nice for somebody that's just picking up programming with nice ramping up that's gonna make it easy to understand and feel right when you actually get into the iOS development part. The thing I had an issue with regarding that course personally is that even though it's very well made and there's a lot of content for it, it was kind of tough to keep up with for me just because of the fact that they are very long videos and they are videos that are planned for and kind of scripted in a way if you want so that they are very dense in content but are also very long which means they can kind of get overwhelming a little bit when you have to work through them all. That's not to say it's a bad thing. Some people prefer that type of content, prefer longer videos, prefer very dense content that's, you know, shot rather quickly um, without much wasted time. But to me, it kind of just made me disconnect from it because it was too big a chunks to manage at one time. There's also an issue with that course, and that's more of a general issue with Udemy course, is that they're not particularly dynamic. They might have, you know, recommendations of stuff you should be working on for yourself to practice what you've been learning, but it's a lot of just copying and try to follow along with what the instructor is doing, which in my opinion is not the best way to learn iOS development. Keep in mind, I'm just giving my opinion. It's well worth to try out these type of things and see what works for you. There's a ton of people that can vouch for the fact that it's an incredibly good course, um, but it's not necessarily for everyone. And there's other options that might suit you better if you have a different learning style. One thing to note is that being such a big project um, it seems like they haven't, at the time of the recording, had time to transition over to Swift UI because they obviously have to go through a whole bunch of content and try to remake it and rethink it for Swift UI, so they haven't reached that point yet. Um, if you really want to jump into Swift UI right away and skip over UI kit, it might not be the thing for you. Or at least you should go check out to see if they have updated it since then. So overall, in my opinion, a fantastic course that is made very professionally and that makes sure you're gonna have all the tools required to make an app, but in a very dense and sometimes kind of heavy way because of the sheer size and density of content that these videos present. Second thing, which might feel a bit more natural to get into and follow along if you have an academic background, I'm talking about Stanford's iOS courses presented by Paul Hagardi, which is a incredible professor and a really good teacher of iOS development. To contrast with the Udemy course I've just been talking about, the whole course has been remade to present SwiftUI as its core, um, which obviously gives you the option of you know learning SwiftUI or maybe going back to an older course if you want to learn UIKit. Um, even though there's small changes that might have been done through iOS releases, it's still gonna be a good source to learn UIKit as a whole. Now, just because it's presented as lectures, it's obviously quite different to the like edited and planned out videos that are presented in the Udemy course. Um, first things being, you know, lectures over a semester, there's obviously a little bit less um, video content that's presented, which might be a little bit more bearable if you don't need to go into the absolute details of everything and there's some things you don't mind you know skipping over and learning when the time comes. Another thing is that being into a lecture setting um, the tempo at which information is presented and how you follow along is to me a little bit more bearable. It's not thrown at you so much because you know there's a little bit more back and forth with the students that are asking questions and you know with the teacher making sure that everybody understands and taking pauses to make sure that some stuff sinks in a little bit better some notable things to note about this is that obviously you need a little bit more of a programming background to kind of get into it because it doesn't necessarily go over the absolute programming basics but don't let that stop you if you have 
a little bit of experience. It is a very introductory class at Stanford. And so as long as you have some programming experience, you should be totally able to follow along with what's presented in the class. Kind of in the same vein as what I mentioned with the Udemy class, one of the issue is that it's not a very dynamic way to learn iOS programming. You probably can find the assignments that are given to the students that are actually taking the class at Stanford, but it probably requires a little bit more effort and it might be a little bit daunting for people that are not used to the assignments that you're kind of used to seeing in university settings where a lot of stuff is going to be thrown at you and not much hand holding is going to be done to kind of try to get you to apply what you've been learning. Overall though, I'd say it's a really good class if um, you have a little bit of programming experience and you want to kind of just be able to skim through a couple lectures and get a basic idea of the concepts that are um, available to you when doing iOS development. Maybe just taking some notes of what exists, uh, basic ideas on how to do things so that you can kind of refer back to it when you actually do a project on your own. Which brings me to the third and final option that I've used to learn Swift development when I first started. I also believe it's probably what's going to be the best option for the most people out there. I'm talking about the 100 days of Swift challenge that are presented on Hacking with Swift by Paul Hudson. If you don't know who Paul Hudson is at this point, you're probably very new to the iOS development community because believe me, at some point while developing something for yourself, you're going to end up on Hacking with Swift to get an idea on how to solve a problem or do something very specific in iOS. So why do I think it's the most likely course that you can look at to learn Swift that's going to fit the most people? First of all, it's a very balanced course. There is a nice ramp up to people that don't have programming experience to learn the very basics of Swift and get accustomed to it in a way that's going to feel you know, nice and easy for them. It's also very easy to skip that part and get into the more iOS specific um, development if you have a little bit more programming experience and you just want to jump to that. Plus, it has a very interesting way of presenting all the new concepts by rotating through three different kinds of projects to, you know, show you that new learning content. Like I said, it goes through a rotation to show the concepts by going through a kind of normal app that you're kind of used to seeing on your phone and then presenting a concept through a game and then presenting a concept that is a little bit more of a technical, you know, Swift related specific item. That way it kind of never gets boring and you're always moving on to the next project. But where it really hits the mark is by pushing people to actually program and problem solve on their own. At the end of many concept explanations, there is quizzes to make sure that you understand the concepts correctly. At the end of every project, there are a couple challenges that force you to get your feet wet and actually problem solve and you know, do some work on your own and try to figure things out. And at the end of every rotation of those three projects, like I said, there's a big consolidation that forces you to write an app that takes into account everything you've learned and focusing on the things you've learned on the previous three projects. There's no question about it. You learn the most by actually problem solving yourself and by programming yourself. So out of the three things that I've presented to you, it's probably the one that makes it the most accessible and you know helps you the most to get into the habit of actually programming something from scratch for yourself and in that way understanding it better. And don't worry, it's done in a super nice way that makes sure that you know everything you need to be able to do those challenges on your own and oftentimes has recaps right before them to make sure that you have all the information you need close by. Plus, it's a lot more manageable because like the name implies, it's meant to be a challenge that you take on over a hundred days that kind of forces you to not burn out so much and not be thrown too much content at once that you need to learn. And it also kind of forces you to learn right away that things stay fresh and feel better in a programming sense when you do a little bit every day. And it's something that's going to follow you for your whole programming career or lifetime you need to kind of stay at it and do a little bit all the time to keep your mind fresh and for it to feel the best. It doesn't matter how long you've been programming for, if you stop for two weeks, it takes a little bit of time when you come back for it to click 
and you know get back into the right mindset getting into that habit right away of doing a little bit every day is going to be paying off immensely for you if you can actually make it happen so there it was my quick opinion on three things that i've personally used to learn swift and ios development but here's one last thing it's going to sound a little bit ridiculous after what i've been talking about but don't be scared to not complete those courses as soon as you feel like you're ready and you have a basic understanding of how to do a couple things that you want to include in the app that you want to build, go start working on your own project. The sooner you start working on your own project and start applying things to your specific context, the best is going to be. First of all, you'll always be applying the concepts, which means you're going to retain them better. You're going to get a better understanding on how they match together when they're part of a bigger project. And you'll get into the mindset of how all developers work, even if they've been programming for 20 or 30 years, they try their best until they hit a wall and then they try to figure out the part that's blocking for them. So as soon as you feel ready, go start your own personal project, get as far as you can with it. And when you hit that wall, either go back to the courses you've been taking to try to see if it helps you get past that wall or you know, just get into the habit of finding the answer on Google, reading the documentation, or finding a video from a content creator on YouTube that's gonna explain to you how to do what you've been missing. I'm telling you, this is the absolute best way you're gonna learn iOS development or any development for the matter. All those courses and the guides and whatever I've talked about today are good to get you started and maybe to help you get past hurdles when they come up, but don't be scared of just getting started on your own project. That's when you'll really feel like the pace is picking up and you're starting to learn more and more stuff. Plus, it's just more fun because you're going to be doing what I'm assuming you're learning iOS or development for, and that's making your ideas come to life and finally, you know, do that project you've always wanted to do. So I hope this was helpful. It was just my quick opinion on a couple things. I hope that it helps you and or maybe made you discover more things if you hadn't heard about some of the things I talked about today. Either way, if you liked it, make sure to hit like. Like I said earlier, it really helps me. And if you want to see more video, hit subscribe. Until next time, don't be scared to go learn Swift. Everything's going to turn out fine. You'll do great. And take care. I'll see you next week.